For a long time, downtown Greensboro was without an independent bookseller. Well, that all changed with the opening of Scuffernong Books. Take a walk inside and you'll find out it's a lot more than just books. Brian Lampkin is the owner of Scuffernong Books. What brought you to Greensboro? I, you know, my pet answer is I follow my wife wherever she goes. So she came to Greensboro, so she let me come along. Um, yeah. You're from Buffalo, New York, had a bookstore there. Yeah. So naturally yeah. it seemed a, a fit to do the same here. Yeah, I had a bookstore there for 12 years. The store is still there, I'm not. Um, but I didn't intend to open a bookstore in Greensboro. Really? But it was missing from my life here, right? I needed a bookstore here in Greensboro. so. I decided, well, no one else is going to do it, let's do it. Yeah, and it was really missing from not just your life, but all of Greensboro as far as this kind of a bookstore. Yeah, yeah. I think that's become apparent to me. Um, one of the most surprising things about opening is the gratitude you get from uh, people of Greensboro, which is not what you expect, right? People walk in the door and say, thank you for doing this, which is such a nice thing to get. So what makes this unique? Well, we're, we're a little, we're idiosyncratic, we're a little funky, we're weird, right? But that's what people miss in their lives. Like, they don't want the cookie cutter experience, especially downtown, right? You need um, a vibrant, interesting, exciting downtown, and I think we, we fit that niche really well. We, and we also provide a real sort of um, conversational, intellectual space too, right? So we meet a lot of needs. Okay, so what makes you funky? <laughs> well, um, books provide a, a weird backdrop, right? There's so much going on in books, right? And we all read so much here. We're all informed by all these writers and all these interesting people, right? So we're interested in that conversation about books. And once you start talking about books, you go to some funny places, right? Um, so I think that's, that's the big draw. But we also have wine and beer and coffee, right? So it creates this sort of third space that people always talk about, a place away from home, away from work, that is really comfortable. It's a community. It's a community. And that's, you know, we, we say books, wine, community is what we trade in, you know? You know, so many people are buying their books online, they're reading articles online, they're yeah. reading on their electronic devices. What do you think is the allure of holding a book and turning the pages and I, feeling it? Yeah, we books did, and bookstores did disappear from the landscape in the 90s and the early 2000s. And I think what happened then is people suddenly realized that's missing from my life, you know? The independent bookstore has come back in amazing amounts, 60 new ones last year in the United States alone. And we also get so tired of being on our computers all day, right? Uh, for me at least, and I know for many people I know, the last thing you want to do is get home at night and get back on your computer to read. You want that different experience of holding that book in your hand and turning the page. It's romantic, it's kind of a lovely, lovely place to be. Do you have a favorite genre? Uh, I'm a bit of a poetry geek. Um, we have a ridiculously big poetry section uh, for, for an independent bookstore, but you know I believe in it, I want it, so it's here. And uh, a lot of literary fiction. I think we define ourselves first as sort of a literary bookstore, but we have all genres. Shannon Jones kind of helps to make this place work. She's been working at Scuffernong for a couple of years, and what is unique about this bookstore is that it's not just books. Yes. Uh, I think it's unique because we have become more of a community space. We are, obviously we sell books, but because we have the wine, the coffee, our food menu, it has also become more of a place just for people to hang out and be associated with books. We also open up our space in back and up in the window for people to reserve for different meeting groups, things like that, both private and public and for reading. So we've really been trying to make it into a happening place to be instead of just a place to buy books and then leave and go home. What is the allure of books to you? Well, to me, I've tried to get into the whole e-reader thing several times. There's just nothing like the physical sensation of a book. You kind of, you develop that relationship with like the cover art and how it feels in your hands as you're reading it. So it's not just experiencing the words on the page, you're experiencing something tactile along with the mental experience of reading the book and that's important to me. I know you're really involved with the children's book section and uh, children's books. What do you love about that? Um, I've been really getting more into the children's books since my son was born. He's seven months old now. Um, and really it's just how well children's authors translate complex ideas and issues in kids' lives into these really simple and accessible formats. Just like a simple little story about a duck can have this crazy existential meaning behind it that you wouldn't really expect, which is interesting from a book that's 10 pages long and made of, you know, press board. <laughs> And when you see people leave with a book or a cup or sit down with a cup of coffee and are reading a book, you know, what is, how does that make you feel about kind of what you're doing here? 
It makes me really happy. I like, I joke with my husband a lot that I really like my job because I can sell something that I believe in. Books are a big part of my life. They're really important to me and like the exchange of knowledge and ideas I think is really important in the world. So I enjoy working in a place where I feel like I am a part of that. When I can recommend a book to someone and they'll leave with it and I know that that will be a part of who they are and how they think about the world from now on. That wasn't there before. If you're looking for a good book, a cup of coffee, glass of wine, or some quiet conversation, do check out Scuffin' On Books in downtown Greensboro on South Elm Street, open every day. Find out more about what's going on and events by going to scuffernonbooks.com.